Hello and welcome to news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the Director General of the World Health Organization, the WHO, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, upon his visit to the Kingdom to inaugurate the organization's office. His Majesty welcomed the Director General and congratulated him over the opening of the WHO office, which, which crowns the joint cooperation between it and the Kingdom over decades. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the WHO for declaring Manama as the first capital in the Middle East as a healthy city 20. 21, thanks to the quality of its first aid care in its health centers and the various initiatives to raise awareness of the contagious and chronic diseases. His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's support for the WHO and all international efforts in containing the pandemic and said that the Kingdom has achieved a great deal in terms of containing the pandemic through free vaccination as led by His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Team Bahrain and its support by the medical caterers and the cooperation of the various members of society. For his part, the WHO Director General expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for his, hus for his hospitality and affirmed that the organization is honored to open an office in the kingdom. He affirmed Bahrain's pioneering experience in dealing with the pandemic in line with the WHO's directives and praised the leadership of His Majesty the King and looked forward to further cooperation with the kingdom in the service of the safety of the world and in the service of the needy. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sudan, Dr. Maryam Al Sadiq Al Mahdi, upon her visit to the Kingdom to participate in the official inauguration of the new Sudanese Embassy in Bahrain. His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's pride in the deep rooted historic relations between Bahrain and the Republic of Sudan and their continuous development across all levels. The Sudanese Minister conveyed to His Majesty the greetings and appreciation of the head of the Transitional Sovereignty Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan. Abdul Rahman Al Burhan and the Prime Minister of the Transitional Sovereignty Council, Dr. Abdullah Hamdouk, and their wishes of further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the Sudanese Minister and asked her to convey his greetings to the Head and Prime Minister of the Transitional Sovereignty Council and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to the people of Sudan. His Majesty noted that the inauguration of the new Embassy of the Republic of Sudan in Bahrain reflects the deep rooted bilateral relations and their continued progress. He also affirmed Bahrain's support of the efforts of Sudan in promoting peace, stability and development and defending the causes of and interests of the Arab nation. His Majesty expressed appreciation of the Sudanese community in Bahrain and their notable contributions to the development of the kingdom. For her part, Minister Al-Mahdi expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his generosity and hospitality, affirming pride in His Majesty's efforts to further develop the Bahraini-Sudanese relations. She also expressed the appreciation of Sudan and its people for the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty, noting Bahrain's role in supporting joint Arab action. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting. The cabinet expressed appreciation for His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's support of Team Bahrain's COVID-19 mitigation efforts and welcomed the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, who opened a WHO regional office in Bahrain while on an official visit. On regional affairs, the cabinet congratulated the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on the successful organization of the Hajj season despite the challenges of COVID-19. The cabinet also followed up with the latest developments in Tunisia while wishing them greater prosperity and stability before condemning the terrorist attack that targeted a market in Iraq. Then the following memorandums were approved.
A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs concerning a draft law approving accession to an agreement on the immunities and privileges of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs concerning financial donations collected by the Sunni and Jafari Endowments Councils for religious purposes. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance concerning regulations for the accession to regional and international organizations along with membership renewal. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects concerning the prospects of real estate development projects. A memorandum by the Minister of Interior concerning the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the General Department for Combating Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security at the Ministry of Interior and the Control and Anti-Corruption Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs concerning the government's official response to nine proposals by the Council of Representatives. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, at Qadabiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the efforts of Team Bahrain's frontline workers and supportive staff to help mitigate the impact of COVID-19 and added that their commitment to the health of Bahraini citizens and residents has played an integral role in reducing infections levels. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of community awareness in supporting the kingdom's comprehensive COVID-19 response, noting that doubling efforts and continuing to follow all preventative measures are of the utmost importance during the next phase. He welcomed Dr. Gabriel's visit to the kingdom and the official opening of the WHO office in Bahrain, which he noted will strengthen an already close partnership between the kingdom and the WHO. His Royal Highness was then briefed on the WHO's global mitigation efforts and extended the kingdom's support and commitment to the WHO COVID-19 response and ongoing efforts to the end to end the pandemic. For his part, Dr. Gabriel says expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and for the generous hospitality. The Director General also commended Team Bahrain's coordinated and comprehensive mitigation efforts, noting WHO's interest in further strengthening cooperation with the Kingdom across various health fields.
The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawzia Zainal, received the Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. During the meeting, the Speaker affirmed the pioneering national effort in containing the pandemic thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King and the leadership of His Royal Highness, Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She also affirmed the role of the Legislative Authority and the rest of the state's institutions in cooperation with the government in legislating in this regard. Zainal then briefed the WHO Director General on the legislative efforts to support the health system and the precautionary health measures. For his part, the Director General praised the efforts of the Representatives' Council in supporting the achievements of the Kingdom and affirmed the role of the Parliaments in supporting popular efforts as well as those of the WHO in confronting all health risks to humanity. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Saleh stated that the opening of a permanent WHO office in Bahrain is an international recognition of the kingdom's distinguished status and pioneering regional and international role in the health field, reflecting His Majesty the King's vision on the need to provide world-level health service to ensure the health and safety of all. As Saleh expressed deep pride in the successes being achieved by Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, enabling the kingdom to reach 99% recovery rate. He praised the patriotic efforts exerted by frontliners to protect society from the pandemic, paying tribute to the Bahraini people for their commitment to implementing the measures recommended by the National Medical Task Force for Combating Coronavirus. He also asserted that WHO Director General's praise of Bahrain's measures to combat the pandemic and mitigate its impacts proved the success of the Bahraini model in fighting COVID-19, the advanced level of Bahrain's health infrastructure and the efficiency of the health services provided for the citizens and residents. The President of the Supreme Council for Health, the SCH, and Head of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Health, received the Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, in the BDF Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research upon his visit to the Kingdom. The SCH President affirmed that the directives of His Majesty the King and the national efforts led by His Royal Highness, Crown Prince, and Prime Minister have enabled the Kingdom to make a outstanding results in combating the coronavirus pandemic and maintaining the health of its citizens and residents. He welcomed the WHO Director General, affirming that the visit reflects the Kingdom's keenness on bolstering cooperation with the WHO in various fields, foremost of which is supporting the organization's efforts and initiatives aimed at confronting the coronavirus at the global level. The SCH President stated that the opening of the WHO office in Bahrain represents an advanced step to enhance the pace of cooperation and joint coordination with the organization. He gave a briefing on the latest developments related to the virus and the preventative measures being implemented in this regard. He affirmed that Bahrain has been one of the leading countries in establishing a national team to lead and coordinate the national efforts to combat the pandemic across all levels. For his part, the WHO Director General underscored the numerous initiatives and procedures adopted by the Kingdom, the most important of which is establishing an operating room to follow up on the developments of the virus in addition to allocating sites for examination, quarantine, treatment and isolation as well as dedicating all national resources to combat the pandemic and provide free vaccination to all individuals without exception free of charge which embodies the values of health equality. The WHO Director General also expressed his appreciation of the joint and coordinated efforts he witnessed during his visit to a number of treatment, isolation and vaccination centers. Today, uh, the presentation pulls almost all, all of the uh, things that Bahrain is, is doing and uh, uh, very impressive uh, because uh, one thing that is clear from our discussion today is, um, you know, the success that uh, Bahrain has is because of the political commitment from the leadership, from His Majesty and from uh, His Royal Highness. Um, and especially, uh, I was I was uh, asking the, this question. Probably, I will continue to ask. Um, when many countries were denying 
um, Bahrain was preparing, even buying uh, kits, uh, big amount, uh, and also uh, looking for, for, for vaccines uh, and um, preparing ICU beds up to 500 in early 2020. That's uh, uh, really unbelievable because uh, the leadership uh, saw it coming and uh, instead of denying uh, was uh, actually thinking about a big intervention to uh, manage uh, the pandemic. Uh, so that's, I think, the central uh, point here. Uh, when there is strong uh, leadership uh, commitment, uh, then, um, you know, uh, you can mobilize all sectors uh, and also you can do big things through those sectors uh, to manage the pandemics. Actually, I think, you know, the visit of the uh, uh, His Excellency Mr. Tadros is actually, you know, to visit Bahrain and see what's happening actually in Bahrain because I think the information he got that we are, you know, uh, doing well because we are actually always ready, you know, before the events actually happen, we are actually had, you know, uh, put up the, the worst thing, actually, we prepare for the worst thing, and that's why I think, you know, things had not been out of control. And I think, you know, our, uh, you know, in the last few weeks, I think from uh, May on, the, the number had rised, you know, very quickly and very, uh, but, you know, we control it very quickly. And because of, the, you know, the close up and for the uh, vaccination rate had actually was the success story for Bahrain uh, that within a few weeks actually had gone from almost uh, 28,000 uh, patients actually in Bahrain to now it's less than 1,000. Today marks the inauguration of the WHO country office in the Kingdom of Bahrain after an official visit paid by the WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. More in this report with Mohamed Youssef. A press conference was held today to mark the inauguration of the World Health Organization country office in the Kingdom of Bahrain, followed by a visit by the WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, who expressed admiration of Bahrain's vaccination success and the Kingdom's efforts to combat the coronavirus pandemic. The office marks a huge success and a value addition to the Kingdom, as well as affirms the strong cooperation and partnership between the two sides. As you know, Bahrain is advocating and continually uh, preaching for peace for everybody in the region. We want to create a safe, secure, prosperous environment, not only for Bahrain, but for the peoples of the, of the region. This office will be the nucleus for the health diplomacy, for uh, spreading uh, the, the knowledge of health, uh, especially the uh, lessons learned throughout the, uh, the campaign that we had in fighting the, the, and mitigating the, the pandemic. Uh, with that, we will be able, hopefully, with the cooperation with the WHO, to achieve uh, health for everybody uh, and health by, by all. Bahrain has always been one of the pioneering countries in the COVID-19 global collaborative response and has implemented a comprehensive package of public health measures to control transmission in the country from the very start before the first case was detected in country. Bahrain's approach has been holistic, evaluating the social and economic impact of all health measures and efforts have also been made to ensure full continuity of treatment for other health conditions. The WHO office in Bahrain is the office number 152 uh, globally and this office is uh, implementing the global and the regional strategy of the World Health Organization working closely with the government and key partners to advance health and well-being and supporting all interventions to advance the realization of universal health coverage and support the implementation of the sustainable development goals through integrating health in all policies. The office working closely with the Ministry of Health 
all other ministries, UN agencies and academic institutions will work on identifying best practices to be exported to the region and globally, where Bahrain will be the incubator for success to export these best practices to the globe. Bahrain's approach was recognized globally, where it has been fully in line with the WHO's mandate for universal health coverage and the regional vision of health for all by all. The inauguration of the World Health Organization country office in the Kingdom of Bahrain is a huge milestone achievement, which affirms the development of the health sector and its advanced services. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The Minister of Information and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, BIPD, Ali bin Mohammed al-Ramehi, participated in the open meeting as part of the second phase of the Future Bet program organized by the BIPD for the Youth, which includes online training courses and workshops on various topics. The Minister affirmed the keenness to support the youth and adopt their creative ideas in many fields in implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, where His Majesty affirmed the importance of support supporting the youth and achieving their aspirations for the benefit of the country. Arumehi stressed that the government led by His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attaches great importance to the youth as a basis for development and a key factor in achieving national goals. He affirmed that the leader of youth action in the kingdom, His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work in youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa bears a great responsibility to support and empower the youth to enable them to become future decision makers and leaders, noting his pleasure in His Highness Sheikh Nasser's leadership of this sector. The commander of the Royal Medical Services, Major General Professor Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, received the Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, to brief him on the efforts that have been taken at the BDF Hospital to contain the pandemic. He affirmed the efforts and capability of the national caterers in dealing with the emergencies. The WHO Director General inspected the intensive care unit that has been used for coronavirus cases, which proved the success of the Kingdom's procedures in offering the necessary care with professionalism. This experience is, is very uh, um, impressive. I, um, uh, by the way, just one story they told me. I was asking how many patients uh, they have today in the uh, ICU center. And they told me that for the first uh, time since, you know, the peak of uh, the pandemic uh, Bahrain had, they have no patient today. None. So this is the first time uh, zero patient. So I'm glad this is, uh, uh, you know, show, this shows uh, that the situation, the pandemic situation, is improving. And uh, uh, I know you will, you will, you will keep it aside. But this is a good, good progress. Uh, on the response, uh, one thing that's very impressive, uh, especially with this uh, facility, is, as you know, this was a parking lot. Uh, and it was converted into an ICU uh, unit uh, with 130 beds. Uh, normally, even the largest hospitals don't have more than 40 ICU units. So having 130 bed ICU unit like this in seven days is, is very impressive. Um, you can only save lives when you uh, do things with such such uh, speed uh, and not only that uh, to bring that speed uh, to use uh, the existing facilities you have and convert it into um, you know ICU or other uh, facilities to fight uh, the pandemic the national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,102,454 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,044,087 had taken the second and 127,995 had taken the booster dose. The ministry, the ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 837 with 108 recoveries, 128 registered new cases and one death. 39 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 62 are contacts of active cases and 27 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.